Hello there, this is James S. Grumpy, Jazz 1978, and at the request of my good friend Watcher Azazel, I have seen all 51 episodes of the children's anime series Digimon Tamers. Yes, my friends, it's inevitable. He's going to continue forcing me to review things until one of us is dead. As always, all the links are all listed down as the underbar, and I ask everyone to please subscribe to the Sadistic Bastards channel. But honestly though, what is there to say? I watched the English dubbed version of the series because the English dubbed version of any anime is usually funnier with more quips and jibes, and I adore the American voice actor who dubbed the voice of Shin in the original Fist of the North Star. Seriously, I bet good money that he dubbed the voice of the villain in every anime series that you will ever see, and it's pretty damn obvious why. But getting back to the series itself though, it's an incredibly well written, well animated, and entertaining anime suitable for all the family, apart from the episode in which Beelzebub crushes another Digimon skull. Of course, there's no blood or gore, but still, it's something that parents will want to check before their children see it. Beyond that, however, Beelzebub's redemption is genuinely beautiful and moving, and in my opinion, the best part of the entire series. But when all is said and done, though, as you'd probably expect from a children's program, Digimon Tamers is popcorn, nothing more, entertainment to be enjoyed and then swiftly forgotten. Indeed, the in-depth analysis of the character of Jerry that Watcher Azazel used to convince me to watch the series as a whole read far too much into the minor plot points that basically just shot past without any real weight or significance. And while I do recommend the series to people who enjoy anime, I'm left with nothing else to say about it. So, moving swiftly on, Watcher Azazel also asked me to review the novel Stormfront by Jim Butcher, the first part of a series entitled The Dresden Files. Once again, the link to the Amazon page on which you can purchase the novel is listed down as the underbar, and once again, it's incredibly well written and entertaining. However, when all is said and done, it's a 1940s-style Pulp Fiction gumshoe detective novel in which the private investigator is a wizard. That's it. The clichés and stereotypes virtually drip from every word and line. The sassy female cop, the polite but sociopathic mob boss, the high-class brothel madam who's also a vampire, and I figured out who the killer was the first time that someone mentioned his name. You can almost hear the cool jazz saxophone, smell the cigarette smoke, and see everything in film noir black and white as Harry Dresden recounts the story in the past tense and the first person. Even the author himself said that this isn't literature, merely entertainment. So ultimately, although I did thoroughly enjoy this popcorn at the time, the only thing that I really want to talk about is the portrayal of female sexuality in this novel, because like the portrayal of female sexuality in almost every novel, film, TV series, and other work of fiction in history, it's almost entirely negative. The evil sorcerer uses the lust generated by orgies to power his destructive spells. The bisexual female character is a lonely, broken, and jaded pervert and a nymphomaniac, obviously. Both of the women who have sex for a living end up dead, naturally. The sexy female journalist uses her sexuality as a tool and a weapon in her attempts to acquire information. Like all other quote-unquote strong female characters since time immemorial, although she exchanges quips with the P.I. and feels genuine affection for him, the female cop's only actual claim to any form of sexuality is the fact that she was once married, and of course, she and the journalist have to survive in order to keep up the sexual tension and the will-they-won't-they -they bullshit in the sequel. Come on, these aren't spoilers. As I've already explained, this book is about as predictable as you can possibly get without summoning the power of the netherworld. But as I've also already explained, this doesn't necessarily make it bad, merely shallow and forgettable. An enjoyable snack which you can easily put out of your mind as soon as it's done. So if all you want is entertainment, if you don't want to be challenged either intellectually or emotionally, compelled to endure brutal reality or an experience that will change the way in which you perceive the world forever, instead only wanting to be distracted for a few hours, then you make up 99.9% .9 of the human population.